Hello, everybody. <coughs> I'm sorry, I thought I had a little more time to eat some dinner before our video, but uh, I thought maybe I could. All right, here we go. All right, I got my phone situated. I'm just gonna have to wait before eating my other bit of dinner. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Patrick and I am your friendly neighborhood shaman. And we are going to do many medicine card readings. So uh, we got people already showing up. Hi everybody. So Roulette and Joe and Anna. Awesome. Hey, everybody. So I'm just getting set up here. So if you're new here, the way this works is <clears throat> the first six people to say yes in the comments get a, a one card reading of the medicine cards. Awesome. Sage is here. Yay, I've missed you, Sage. Um, so, if you want a one-card reading, you, all you need to do is say yes in the comments. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four people. So, we've got two spots. One spot. <laughs> I am wrong. So, we've got <coughs> one spot left. Nadia. Hi, Nadia. Awesome. So, our six places are taken. Oh, Carly, you just missed it. So, so if you are not one of the first six, hi, Feather. I got you, Sage. Yep. And so we have our six. I'm, I'm sorry, we've got a couple more. Feather and Carly, we already have have our six. But that's okay, because all you need to do is choose a number between one and six and just pay extra attention to that card and I promise that there will be a message for you even though it may be pointed towards someone else. Spirit just has the most miraculous way of dovetailing and weaving together different messages. So, um, and my only ask is that if you're watching this, to please share my video and share it on your own page, or you can tag people in the in the uh, comments or whatever. But thank you for sharing the magic and sharing the love. I think that's it for right now. So let's get to our, our readings. So card number one for roulette. Ha! Roulette, you got frog. Card number one is frog. I'm trying to get, wow, my light is really bad tonight. Um, it's a frog, hippity hoppity. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say good job. <clears throat> I don't remember what, what your card was last week. I, I know, I remember it was, I think it was reversed, but whatever you're doing, keep doing it. <coughs> Frog is about cleansing, right? It's about um, more, more than trying to get away from something else. Frog is about hopping toward something better. You know, frog, because frog... Um, 
Let me start over. Frog is basically the patron saint of um, empaths because when Frog is in the water, he doesn't drink it. He just soaks it in through his skin. So whatever is in the water is in Frog. Yeah, Tammy, I'm sorry. We've already got our six, but we're only on card number one, so. Which is Frog. <coughs> and so because of that, Frog needs pure water, right? Um, oh, dang. I'm on the, I'm, I'm on this app. It's called Be My Eyes. And I, there was someone that just called, it's like, it's for blind people. And if someone who is blind or hard, like has visual challenges, they can call the thing and it'll beep it through to someone on the app so that you can tell them what they're reading or, you know, they can't tell colors. You can tell them which shirt is red or blue or whatever. They just, someone just called me, but I didn't, I can't pick it up right now. And it, it, that's like the first one I ever got. Anyway, so, okay, ground. <laughs> Sorry, that was exciting. Um, so frog, because they need pure water, if they were in, in, in a pond in a water source that is not pure, they will hop until they find one that is. And so, and it, it might seem like semantics, be it, you know, whether you're, you're hopping away from something that's not pure or hopping towards something that is pure, but it makes all the difference in the world. Um, so if you're hopping away from something, your focus is on what you're leaving. And so your focus is backwards. It focuses in the past. Your focus is at what's behind you. And like they say, energy, ener energy flows where consciousness goes, right? So if you're focusing on everything you're trying to get away from, the universe being a giant yes says, oh, okay, that's what they're focused on. They want, must want more of that. And so you end up just kind of hopping in circles because all you're doing is finding the same thing over and over again. But when you're focused on where you're going, when you're focused on moving toward purity, toward authenticity, <clears throat> that guess what? That's energy goes, flows where consciousness goes. And so you're focusing on, on the future, even if you don't know what that future looks like, you're focusing on feeling better. You're focused on knowing that there is something better than what you've had in the past. And so that is where the consciousness goes and the universe says, yes, okay, they want something new. They, they want something better. And so it, it makes all the difference in the world, whether you're going to or fro. And so, Again, that's a really, it's like a validation from the universe that you are moving in the right direction and that you have, it's funny because a while back I realized that there's a lot in common between frog medicine and unicorn medicine. Um, And it's because, like they say, wherever you go, there you are. And so you carry your vibe with you, right? And that's the thing about if you're in a pond that's, that's toxic to you or unhealthy for you, you know, it's because you're vibing at a different level. And if you stay in that pond, it's going to bring your level, your, your frequency down. And so you have to go and find another pond, you need to move toward a higher frequency. And so it's like you carry your frequency with you. 
and you're just naturally drawn to the circumstances, the people, the situations that reflect that higher frequency. So there's no room for victimhood. There's no room for, man, if only they would change this, or if only I hadn't been told this in the past, or whatever. Um, awesome. Buffalo River, that's in Arkansas, Roulette? I'll have to come visit you guys when you move. I'm getting kind of a, a travel bug on me. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's really that letting go of things and, um, and so by, by, by the, the comparison with the unicorn medicine, you know, unicorns heal by their very presence because of their, they're like the highest vibrational creature ever. And um, and so just by being somewhere, they cleanse, right? Oh, thank you, Roulette. I'll give you guys a couple of, a, a couple of weeks to, to settle in and then I'll come and knock on your door and sleep on your couch and stuff. Um, so, so unicorn, in fact, you know, unicorns are known for when they they dip their horn into a body of water it purifies the entire body of water by its own vibration and so the thing with fraud is that you carry that vibration you're creating the world around you you're drawing oh wow um i don't know a lot about this but I'm going to talk about it anyway. I know that I know enough to talk about it, but um, in like like Polynesian culture, they have what they call the wayfinders. Like like um, experts are always trying to figure out how these people on these little reed boats could find their way between these huge expanses of island of, of ocean to these tiny little islands, right? And they had um, what they called wayfinders. They were people, basically medicine people or, you know, um, sacred people who were taught the art of wayfinding and what they basically would do, it's like Moana, you know, like the movie Moana and they would be able to find the island in their mind and connect to the island and um, basically created like an energetic cord to where they were going and they sat at the front of the boat and they just kept you know it's like Okay, a little to the left, a little to the right, or whatever. They 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 were the ones basically navigating to this island, and it was almost. Um, I heard it explained to me one time, and I realized it was all. It's almost more like, like the wayfinder sends that cord out to that island, and then is basically pulling the island to them with that cord. And so, oh my God, just got chills. So that is frog medicine. You're Moana. Um, you know, like Moana, knowing there's something more, having that, that sense of wanting to find out what's on the other side of the reef, um, knowing that there's something more, especially when everything starts to the island, everything starts to die and wither and stuff. And, you know, so she heads out. Um, <laughs> I've got the, well, I, maybe fortunately, I can't remember the exact tune to it, but I'm, I'm thinking about the Your Welcome song. Um, 
anyway, so you don't even need to know where you're going, what it looks like. It's just that sense. I might, Jacqueline. I, you're in, in Texas, right? Is that right? I've got, it's, it's funny because I've got all these places I'm being drawn to go to. And actually some of them are, you know, my guides have specifically asked me to go to certain places. So, um, one of which, strangely enough, is Las Vegas, but not actually the city, but just out, outside of, of Vegas, there is um, a temple to Sekhmet, the, the um, Egyptian goddess, the lion-headed goddess. She's one of the ones I work with, and she appeared in one of my journeys um, one time and said, I'm waiting in the desert for you. <laughs> my, my guides want us to meet. Huh? You're right, Jefflin. That would be cool. I haven't been to Texas for a long time. Um, I love San Antonio. I like that's the one that goes comes back in my memory, partially or or mostly because of of the Alamo and my love for Davy Crockett. In fact. Speaking of, my phone is actually resting on this prayer candle I made. I don't know if you can see it, but it's St. Davy. Davy Crockett is one of my heroes, always has been. So, so we'll see, Jefflin, maybe I will. I, I actually I, I actually have this um, spark of an idea. <coughs> I don't know exactly how to do it, how it would look, the logistics or anything. But I, I I've been thinking about like doing a reality show kind of thing and calling it like shamanic journeys or something. And I would travel to different places, you know, at least starting in the in the US and and do ceremony at different places and connect with <clears throat> different holy people or whatever in the different the different keepers of the land and stuff like that and like document it. But I think that would be really fun. So I don't know if anyone has ideas or connections or something, um, I am open to anything. So anyway, back to the cards, roulette. I hope that makes sense for you, but know that you are a wayfinder, that you you send that, that cook out. <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> I'm always hook and hook that, that island of purity, and then you're pulling it in. <laughs> Roulette. I should 100% do that, like a nice Minnesotan Anthony Bourdain. That would be fun. It would, it would be fun. So anyway, so that was card number one. Dang, I thought I was doing good because I, I was starting starting on time and and then I got off on these tangents. So I hope that is helpful, Roulette. Again, that's okay. This is for you, Roulette. No, there we go. Woohoo! All right, card number two for Joe. Let's see what Joe has going on. Oh, 
two cards jump out um, and they are otter in reverse and turkey in reverse um, God, I need to work on my lighting I don't know why it, it seems darker tonight than usual um, so otter and turkey in reverse if I can maybe turn them go toward the light there we go um, <coughs> so otter okay give me a give me a second I'm getting kind of this vibe from the combination of both of those um, otter is the divine feminine otter like i don't think there's another creature who i'm going to say this and i'm going to think of like a half dozen but i don't think there is a creature more akin to the divine feminine than otter she is everything she is you know the flow and and the softness and at, at the same time the ferocity and the um tenacity and but the thing is is that um she's inclusive right otters um do not recognize any natural predators they welcome any any creature they meet they they meet them as a friend and um until until the other animal proves otherwise, otter will be friendly. And but if they do, if the if that new creature proves other than friendly, um, otter being inclusive is like they then have the entire family of the otters to deal with, and and they can be fierce, very fierce. So. Anyway, so what I'm getting at here is that in reverse, otter can be, um, it can be about what are you excluding? What are the ideas or what are, what are, what are the things that you're not looking at? You know, and it, it could be a blind spot. It could be like something you don't even think about. Like it's so obvious it's hiding in plain sight. Or, um, or not being not giving yourself enough grace like what you the thing that you may be excluding might be the feeling of worthiness the feeling that you are good enough the feeling that you get to do what you love. <laughs> Shadow work, cough, cough. Um, yeah, it's like, there, it's just, it's like, it's, it's some little thing that's going ignored that, and it's, it's like, it's this that is preventing you from sharing your gifts. Right now, things are out of balance as far as um, Turkey is the giveaway bird. And so when, when the environment is in balance, Turkey is there. 
because um, like like the traditional Thanksgiving a story about the Native Americans bringing turkey to uh, the colonists because that was already a um, long-held tradition because turkey, one turkey can feed so many people, right? And because of that, the native peoples would support Turkey. They would, they would go out of their way to make sure Turkey had <coughs> enough food, enough shelter, enough places to roost in safety, etc. Because then when it was her turn, they knew that she would, would take care of them. So it was this give and receive that reciprocity. And so right now it's like that, that reciprocity wants to happen. It's like you're on the very brink of something big. And it has to do with sharing your gifts. But it's like, it's like one, one little thing that you're excluding that is, is gumming up the works. It's like, like the water just isn't flowing or you're, you're being blocked from flowing with it. You're blocking yourself from flowing with it. Okay, okay. So it's, it's kind of along the lines of what um, Abraham Hicks talks about. Um, like using, you know, source as a river, right? The energy flows in one direction. There's one source of well-being and the river flows from that source and we are on that river in our boats, but a lot of us, instead of just following the river, turn our boats around and try to row upstream, thinking we have to get back to something. But as Abraham Hicks said, there is nothing upstream that you need. Everything you need is downstream. So stow the oars and let the river carry you. <coughs> you can trust the current. I think that might be what's being held back is that, that trust, like, and it can be scary, right? It's like, oh my God, if I don't control where my boat's going, I could run into the rocks or I could, you know, go off of a, a waterfall or whatever, but that's not going to happen. And you can trust the flow of the river. Because like with roulette's frog, you're the one who, the, the world around you reflects your vibration, right? And I just heard something. I can't remember where I heard it. But it was talking about trusting your higher self. And just the fact that we call it our higher self is, is slightly problematic because that in itself creates a separation, right? Maybe it was Bashar that I was listening to. But your higher self, the ascended self, the true self of you that can see everything, that's still you. It isn't someone else. It's not some strange old man in the sky, you know, demanding you worship them. It's that that higher self of you that knows is you. There is no separation. There is no one trying to test you. There is no one trying to trick you. There is no one outside of yourself trying to um, screw with you. But the intuition you get, the guidance you get, the synchronicities, that is all part of you. There is nobody else. So you can trust your intuition. You can trust the thoughts or the nudges, the, the emotional nudges. And, um, and that's the only way that you're going to open that up. Because you have a lot to give. 
You are very talented, my friend, and you have a lot to give. And I think there's a need to open up your sphere of um, how you see yourself. And just, I think the main, the main ingredient is trust. Like otter, I mean, to me, otter is, is like, um, how do I put this? Otter is like, um, an embodiment of the river itself, right? It's like if the if the river were if the river had animal form, it's it would be otter. And so it's like otter is so much a part of the river that she can roll with it and flow with it and you know and so she doesn't worry about getting run up on the rocks or bashed against in the rapids or whatever. Um because she knows that she is part of the flow. So trust. Stop paddling upstream, you know. Along with that analogy, something else has been coming up recently. Um, I even did a comic for it a while back. But it's like, you know, along with that boat, scenario imagine that you're going through one of those tunnel of love rides at, at, at a fair or carnival or something right you get in the boat and you go into the tunnel and it's dark right and you're going through and lights will flash and things will jump out of the dark at you and loud noises and all these things right but none of that can hurt you if you stay in the boat, keep your hands and your feet inside, the boat knows where it's going. The boat has its own trajectory, its own pace. You don't have to steer it. You don't have to speed it up. You don't, and, and the things jumping out are just meant to emotionally trigger you, but they can't touch you. The only way you're going to get hurt is if you jump out of the boat to try to attack or defend yourself from these things. And so it's always, the ball is always in your court. If you decide these things are real and you have to defend and fight them, then you're going to get hurt. But as long as you know you're in the boat, the boat knows, the boat follows the course of the river through the tunnel, goes at the right pace. You don't have to do anything. There's no need to fear. There is nothing that can truly hurt you. You might be triggered and it might scare you, you know, like sudden scare you or whatever, but nothing can harm you truly. And you know, you came here with a purpose. You came here with a gift. Um, and, shoot, what was I gonna say? Oh, another thing that Abraham Hicks talks about is how, you know, Well, this is kind of me and Abraham Hicks, but it's like your desires, your passions, your joy, that's your compass, right? Because that is the path you came, to, that you chose to follow when you were decided to be born here, right? And so, um, and what Abraham Hicks says is the path of joy is the path of least resistance. And so it's basically getting out of your own way to allow your gifts to flow. Um, and, you know, we, because of our upbringing, because of our society, 
we tend to discount the things that we're good at, that we're talented at. We, we tend to think because we're taught it has to be work. It's got to be hard. You know, you have to push through it. If anything is easy, that's just a hobby, right? But don't enjoy yourself. Don't you dare enjoy yourself, you know? But the things that bring you joy, the things that come naturally to you, your talents, your passions, that is your compass of what you came here to do. Let them guide you. It doesn't have to be hard work. And if it is hard work, there's an energy to that hard work where the payoff to it makes it so worthwhile that, you know, when you're following your true path, you're not doing it alone. That river of energy is carrying you. Spirit carries you. It's just about getting into alignment with your own purpose, with your own, own guidance. Um, and your higher self and moving in that path of least resistance. The things that come naturally to you, like your sound bowls, how naturally you took to those. Just, it's like, do, do the things that are fun. Do the things that come naturally. Do the things where you lose yourself so much in them that you find yourself, okay? All right. Card number three for Anna. Oh, and I always forget to say it at the beginning and then by the end, a lot of people leave. But um, if you enjoy my work, if you enjoy my readings, if you get something tonight and you wish to reciprocate, I have my PayPal and my Venmo links uh, pinned to the top of the comments. And I greatly, great, gratefully, <laughs> gratefully accept any donations you wish to give to support me and my work. It's your support that allows me to focus on my work so that I can support you. It's, that's, I, I would just... I just shuffled them in, but that in itself is turkey medicine. So, you're welcome, Joe. All right. <laughs> Card number three for Anna. You got, I think I should hold them closer, then they're darker. You got antelope in reverse. Um, antelope is kind of a tricky medicine for a lot of people to get a hold of. Um, Antelope is about sacrifice. <coughs> but it's not the sacrifice of martyrdom. Like giving, uh, it's like, oh, let me give my right arm so that you have can, you know, survive or whatever. It's not about giving up what you love, giving up what is, is, is best for you. Um, that's old world thinking. That's Newtonian physics where you have to balance the sides of the equation and someone has to lose in order for someone to win. That is not what we're talking about. We're talking about a non-zero sum where when we all do better, we all do better. So we can support each other in our highest good, because if it's good for someone else, it's good for me. And if it's good for me, it's good for everyone else, because we're all one. There is no competition. Um, there's enough for everybody. Life isn't pie, right? <laughs> um, and so the only 
the only, how do I put this? Um, the only true I don't know how to frame this. The only true situation is a win-win. Because if somebody loses, nobody wins. And so what this means is that you're being asked to give something up. But it's not as similar to what I was talking about with Joe. It's not like some big, um, you know, like we always think that our purpose is some big mission from God. And God is up there on his throne saying, you must do this no matter what. And I don't care what it takes. And you have to give up your best life and your, you know, you have to sacrifice your well-being for someone else. It's not like that. The sacrifice antelope is asking for is the sacrifice, sacrificing those things that keep you from experiencing your best life. It's not asking you to sacrifice your best life. It's asking you to sacrifice those things that are keeping you from your best life. Like it could be habits, um, addictions. It could be like watching too much TV or, you know, gossiping or it could be anything. It could be food and it can also be thought patterns. The thought patterns that we just kind of keep around just because they're convenient because it means we don't have to look at our own issues and stuff. Um, or thinking like the thought patterns that say, oh, I'm not good enough like I was talking about with Joe, <coughs> that the thought pattern is that I don't deserve to be happy. So I might as well keep these certain things around because I'm not necessarily happy, but I'm not necessarily sad either. So it's about giving up. It's, it's like that, that, that song just popped into my head accentuate the positive eliminate the negative latch on to the affirmative don't mess with mr in between and there are so many of us that are messing with mr in between we're not necessarily bad off but we're also not doing stellar and so we, we keep in that gray area and life just becomes this blur where, you know, we're emotionally absent from our own lives, etc. And so it's time to start focusing on the positive, on what can be, who you can be. And these can be some hard things choices because choosing yourself it may seem like that old that old um framework of you know somebody has to lose for someone to win and if you're choosing yourself and you're winning that means that someone else is losing and you know by choosing yourself choosing your own well-being um Other people may be upset. Other people may be broken. Other people might hate you. Um, they will be victimized and, and blame you for all the problems in their life. But that is not true because, again, that non-zero sum, right? If it's your best, for your best well-being, then it's automatically for everyone else's. And if someone suffers because of your choice, your decisions to follow your own best path, then they were benefiting from keeping you at that lower vibe. And by you stepping up, you're not, you're, you're not, 
um, like banishing them or anything, but you're, you're moving upward and you're inviting them up with you. You're inviting them to a similar vibration and it's their choice whether they're going to stay where they are or join you, right? So does that make sense? Um, I know a lot of times we put off making choices or decisions, even though we know that, you know, like our heart is, is begging us to do these things. Our, our heart is, is because your heart already knows what you deserve. Your heart knows what is in store. Your heart is multidimensional, multi-temporal. So when you get those nudges to do something, even if they make no sense, that's what I was talking about with Joe. That's your higher self stepping in and saying, hey, go this direction, even if that direction in 3D doesn't make sense. Because your heart knows where you need to go and what you need to do. And if your heart knows, your heart is what connects you to the heart of all living beings. So your heart has already done all the calculations necessary to know what is the best for everybody. And so if your heart says yes to something, it is automatically for the best of everybody. And by, by choosing yourself, you're, you're planting seeds in everyone else. You, you, you're something that is to your betterment cannot be to the detriment of someone else. If your heart is, is, is crying out for something, if your heart is, is, is longing for something, um, that something is, really is for the highest good of everyone. And they may not see it that way. It may take a lifetime or two for that seed to start to grow roots, but you can't, you can't do harm by raising your own frequency. You can't do harm by answering the call of your soul. And now, you know, another part of that is we don't know what it looks like, right? We're in this place where we may not be the happiest we could be, but we're safe. But, you know, boats are safest when they're in the harbor, right? But that's not the purpose of building a boat. And so... It's, it's, again, it's that trust, that, that trusting your heart, if your heart is telling you to do something, trusting that the universe has already prepared a future for you to support what your heart is asking you to do, okay? The universe is not going to ask you to give up everything you love. In fact, that's what we're all doing right now. We're giving up, you know, in general, we're giving up our best life so that we can make other people happy, so that we can fit in, we can not, not um, make waves, right? But you came here, anyone who is watching this, you came here to make waves. Not tsunamis, not wash all the bad people away or anything like that. Not to like um, violently overturn things, but just to raise that vibration, right? And when we raise that, the, the vibration of the earth is rising right now. And that is why there's so much chaos. I know that sounds, doesn't make sense to some people, but it's, it's, all, when you raise your frequency, 
those things that I'm talking about that are holding you down, they can't exist in your energy field at a higher vibration. So they are pushed out. So they are rising to the surface to be pushed out as you raise, because they can't exist up here. And that's what's going on with our world right now. The, the vibration, there are so many people waking up right now. The human race as a whole, the earth as a whole is rising. And so these little, these things that used to be, you know, backroom deals or shoved under the carpet or, you know, in the shadows and the alleys are now like front and center. And we think it, you know, everyone, a lot of people think it's a sign that we're going backwards, that we're going to hell, we're going, we all, we're doing something wrong. And that's actually opposite. These things are coming, they're rising to the surface like a fever burning off the infection, right? And so by taking care of yourself and seeing to your best and highest and easiest timeline, you're automatically blessing the world, the human race as a whole. And it does take a lot of trust to know that you know to move in a direction that other people don't approve of or will be upset about or think you've betrayed them or whatever. But that's all a reflection on them, not on you. Okay? So don't be afraid to leap. That's what antelopes do. And once you get started, there's no stopping you. Antelope is the second fastest land animal on the planet. They're only slightly slower than a cheetah, the pronghorn antelope. So give yourself some grace you know, do some listening to your heart, meditate, pray, etc., and just ask yourself what, in order, in order to be fulfilled, to fulfill my purpose, to feel like, like I'm the person I came here to be, what do I need to let go of? And that act, sacrifice actually means to make sacred. So by sacrificing these things of a lower vibration or lower nature, you're making that a sacred act and moving again, like the earlier ones, toward your highest self, okay? All right. And as usual, I am extra. Well, I guess if it's usual, it can't be extra. I am very loquacious tonight. So this is taking. Thank you for your persistence and your patience and sticking with me. Oh, wow, Amaral. Antelope is your husband's totem. Yours is the black jaguar. That's interesting. You're welcome, Anna. I hope that is helpful. And I want to say, when I am doing these readings, to please know that I am, I am coming from a neutral, non-judgmental place. When I'm saying these things, I'm not pointing my finger saying, you got to do this, you got to do that. That's not my place. I'm just reading the cards and, and uh, you know, speaking the words that are coming to me. But again, this is your journey. This is your path. And this is your choice to listen or not listen, right? 
You have, if something doesn't resonate with you, you have every, every reason to poo-poo it, okay? Um, I am not here to judge anyone. I am not here to, to make it sound like I know better than you what you need to do, okay? I am just the messenger. I don't want anyone to think, to ever feel like I'm chewing them out or you're saying, oh, you're wrong, you need to do this, blah, blah, blah. You are perfect the way you are. You're exactly where you need to be in this moment to get to where you're going, always. And that in itself is commendable. All right, Sage, you are card number four. Ha <laughs> ha! All right. Yes, please don't shoot the messenger. Let's just with a marshmallow gun. Then I had a friend that bought marshmallow guns for us and we were shooting each other with marshmallows and then we could eat the ammo. Um, <sighs> Sage, you got Lynx, who is kind of the patron saint of... Psychics and Seers. Um, you have been doing a lot of work. <coughs> this is not, this is not an easy medicine um, to claim. You know, links being the keeper of secrets, you know, she sees everything. She, kind of like I was just saying, she, she looks at you and she knows everything about you. She can read, she can see through you. She sees your energy. She knows exactly what's going on, but there is no judgment there. And so she doesn't need to volunteer and tell you this is what you need to do. She doesn't, um, she's not better than anyone else. She just sees what others don't. But in order to reach that place, she cannot have any secrets from herself. <coughs> um, and that's what I'm, I'm saying. Good job, Sage, because you've done a lot You've done a lot of extra shadow work, clearing out, like I'm always talking about the hollow bone in shamanism, right? And so you've been doing so much work because that, in order to be, to be that good at reading energy, to be able to see the, you know, and that's why she's the keeper of secrets because she sees it, but there's nothing she needs to do with it. Everything is perfect. And so we never volunteer um, information or guidance if not asked for. Um, but that's why, because she sees you as perfect as you are. There's nothing that needs to change unless there's something you want to change and you come to her and ask. Um, now I'm going around in circles, but um, yeah, because if we don't clear our own issues, um, our own prejudices or traumas, etc., then we're not going to see others clearly. You're feeling this a lot right now? Awesome. Um, <laughs> you have to be clear yourself to see others clear, to see others more clearly, right? And it's like, like we're all mirrors for other, for each other, right? And so it's it's like not only in seeing 
what's true of others, but by clearing that hollow bone, you're actually polishing yourself, cleaning yourself up to such a purity that um, there's no there's no smudges in that that mirror, so that people look at you. And this can be kind of a, 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 a rough part of this whole thing. But, um, you know, if you have, if you do have issues and, and um, filters and things that you're looking through and projecting, when other people look at you, they also see those things. Um, and they can project onto you because if they, they'll see it if it reflects something in them, if it resonates with some energy in them. Awesome. I have a few, I mean, you don't get here without doing a lot of shadow work. So good job. Um, but then when you become that clear, others, you might find that others, um, others might, be attracted toward you because you are that clear mirror for them and they can see their, their true self. They can see possibilities of who they are in you. And there are other people that may walk away or, or run for the hills because when you're that clear mirror, they can see everything about themselves and they're not ready to do that. And so whatever, whatever, filters and blemishes and issues they have in themselves, they're going to project onto that clean surface and they're going to accuse you of different things, but that's all them. Again, like I was saying with Anna, it's like you're only responsible for your own vibration, right? And like... There was a show back a while back I, I like to watch <coughs> with, um, it was hosted by Carson, one of the original Queer Eye for the Straight Guy people. Um, and I think it was called How to Look Good Naked. And it was, it was it, I, I cried pretty much every episode because what he did was he would take a woman that had really poor body image, probably dressed a little bit frumpy or trying to hide her figure rather than show it, etc. And he would go through these steps with her to get her to feel better about her own body. And uh, it was just the things, I apologize for my gender for everything that we have put you women through. It pains, I, I mean, yeah. Um, but it was, it, was, it was hard to watch on one hand because you'd see how, how badly our society has failed women. And at the same time, then it, it was like so beautiful to get that redemption when, when someone started to get that spark of who they really are and to celebrate who they are. And where I'm going with all of this is that one of the things that he said to every single person was, you're only responsible for the presentation. You are not responsible for, for how people receive you. That's on them. And so, again, that polishing that mirror, clearing that hollow bone, becoming your highest possible um, vibration, people may love you and people may hate you, but it has nothing to do with you. So... Yeah, good job. You get fireworks too. <laughs> but 
I, I, I have a feeling this just popped into my head. I don't know if it's true or not, but like where you are right now, I'd be willing to bet there's a part of you that is, is going, why didn't I do this sooner? Because this was always who you were. You just didn't know it yet. So you're welcome. All right, Amaral, card number five. Let's see if we can actually end before 9.30 within the annotated time. The one thing I do want to say, I just can't not say this, um, in that show, my favorite part was, and this is where the spark usually came on, he would line up, he'd have a lineup of women, like in their underwear, from like skinniest and up, and then the person he was helping had to put herself into that line where she thought she belonged. And I think every time I watched anyway, the woman always put herself heavier than she actually was. And when she found out where she actually belonged in that line, that's when you can see the sparks going on, realizing that her whole self-image was an illusion. It was forced upon her and it wasn't true. I just wanted to say that. That was my favorite, favorite part of that show. And at the end of the show, they would do a nude um, <laughs> it's true, I'll say, if anyone walks into the middle of this live stream, they're going to go, what the hell are we walking into? Um, at the end of the show, just for closure, they actually would do a, a nude photo shoot with a person. Um, you know, tasteful, but, and then they would project it, I think this was in New York, and they would project it up on a building somewhere, like Gigantuan. And then they would bring them out into the street, say, hey, look. And it'd be like, oh, my God. And there'd be this tastefully done nude image of them projected outside on this building. So it was a good show. It, it, I just, I love stuff like that. All right, Amaral, enough of the tangents. Let's get on to Amaral. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to come in midstream on one of my live videos. <laughs> Especially if you don't know me and you're like, what the? First he's talking about unicorns and he's talking about naked women and... <laughs> All right. Amaral, you got Otter in reverse as well. Um. <laughs> I just, sorry, I just realized what I just said about unicorns and naked women, and I just realized that that was how they captured unicorns, was with virgins, right? And the unicorn was drawn to the virginity, and which in those days was the purity. It wasn't anything about sex, but the unicorn was drawn to the woman because of her purity. The naked, you know, um, naked is about being transparent and pure, etc. Anyway, tangent done. We're gonna put that aside. Go away. You're done. Thank you. And Amaral, your card is Otter in Reverse. Um, so 
What's coming up for you is the importance to play. <coughs> Hi, Kit Kat. Don't eat my hot dog. Uh, I had a couple of brats. I, I got one chunk down before the video, and the other one's going to have to wait. So don't eat it. Um, play. Everything Otter does is play, even when they are problem solving, even when there's something <coughs> in the way, they turn it into a game. And part of that is, it's, it's, that, like John Lennon said, um, there's no such thing as problems, only solutions. You know, we live in a closed system. When you're in a closed system, you can't have an emptiness without having something to fill it. You can't have a problem without there automatically being a solution. And so <coughs> to realize even the challenging things um, that if there's a challenge, there is automatically a solution. And I always use that analogy of the New York Times crossword, right? They don't, they don't come up with the clues first and then try to figure them out before putting them into the paper. They come up with the answers. They come up with the solution and then they build the questions. They build the problems around the solution. So if there are problems, there is automatically a solution. And so anything that is challenging, um, there is automatically a solution. And if it is in your path, then you have everything you need. It may take, it, it may be uh, like a springboard to a part of you that you're not aware of yet, you know, a growth opportunity or something, but Nothing that happens is beyond you. And because you know there's going to be a solution, then you can actually, you know, tone down the seriousness of everything and, and treat it like a game. You know, it becomes, it becomes a mystery. It becomes Sherlock Holmes or something, right? And so... The main thing is that you learn, like, prioritize playing. Prioritize doing something just because it's fun. I um, went to this gathering a couple weekends ago. I think it was a couple weekends ago. Time is so weird right now. But anyway, we, you know, it's a spiritual gathering and and we were talking about different things and someone actually said that, what was it that, we were talking about what we needed more of or something, I can't remember exactly, but my friend came up with fun that no one really talks about fun in spiritual circles. It's all about the work and it's all about getting somewhere. It's all about healing and getting to that that pinnacle or whatever and no one talks about it being fun but the whole point of these spiritual paths yes it is very hard work it is um sometimes devastating work but the purpose underneath all of that is to find joy, to find enjoyment, right? To find pleasure, to have fun. Because once you know the truth, it's kind of like that, like how um, <coughs> enlightenment and humor go hand in hand, right? It's like the more enlightened you become, the more joyful you become because you don't have as much baggage. You don't have as many issues that are distracting you because you see the truth and then you're in on the cosmic joke, right? Um, and like I always use the example of the Dalai Lama who is, you know, 
possibly the most enlightened being on the planet, and he can't go for five minutes without laughing, right? Um, allow yourself humor as part of the play. It's like, even when you stumble, it's like, oh my God, I just did that. Um, and allowing, like, allow every, even the, even the stumble to be a part of the path, because it is, is when you stumble that you then become more aware of your stance or your step or whatever. But just focus on the fun. Like, One of the one of the channeled beings I used to follow, I can't remember which one said this, but it was basically if it's not fun, don't do it. As part of that equation I gave Joe about the, you know, path of least resistance is the path of joy. And so if it's not fun, it's not your path. If it's not enjoyable, if there isn't an element of joy even in the hard work. Um, then it's not your path. So, really focus on the fun. Focus on the joy. Be the, the comic relief, right? Be the, you know, it's, it's funny because it's like, um, okay, this is, this is, this, um, there's an old joke about how can, how can angels fly because they take themselves so lightly? And if you take light, Lee, it's like lightly as in, you know, weight, of course, and then lightly as in light, radiant. Um, awesome. You've been laughing about situation stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Um, keep focusing on that and, and pay attention to how much smoother things flow when you do take things lightly. And that, ta that, that includes, you know, not just laughing about the situations, but um, laughing about yourself too, right? You're not taking, like, you're not taking yourself too seriously where if you fail something, that's it, you're done, whatever, right? So, good job. I think this is kind of, I was like, well, why is it in reverse that you've already been doing it? But I think, I think it's a, it's a um, keep going kind of thing. Keep playing. It's not, play is not, Play is not the means to get to something else. Play, it's, it's like Dr. Wayne Dyer used to say, there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. So, all right. Last card, six, card number six for Nadia. Can we do it? I almost have to, like, I already knocked this this these live streams from an hour to an hour and a half and now I'm having trouble keeping it within that. Ha <laughs> you're so right, Amaral. Amaral says that you can't take yourself too seriously when it's all a, a hologram and you can't complain of a shitty script that you co created. That's absolutely true. Good job. 
All right, card number six for Nadia. Nadia, you got Moose. Moose has not been showing up a lot lately, so it's good to see him again. <coughs> and what Moose medicine is about is self-esteem. Um, Moose is... Uh, Moose medicine, in a nutshell, is what I call majestic darkiness. Moose is one of the most powerful animals. If you've ever seen one in person, they're gigantic. They are powerful. They are, it's like being in the presence of royalty. And at the same time, they're one of the dorkiest looking animals on the planet. <coughs> and so what it really is about, that self-esteem, it's about loving everything about yourself even and especially the things that make you stand out from the crowd, those things that you most likely had been teased about when you were younger. Um, it is those unique things that are exactly the gifts you brought for the world. And so that self-acceptance is the majesticness. And, you know, I mean, it really, you know, I mean, what am I trying to say here? It really is about that self-love and that self-acceptance, right? It's about your energy it's not about looks. Um, it's, I was just, this is kind of maybe a morbid or bizarre thing to think about, but I was just thinking about um, like at funerals and such, right? It's like, I don't think I've been to, well, I was raised Catholic, so I'm talking about open casket wakes, right? I don't think I've been to a wake where people were like, they really don't look like themselves, right? Because it wasn't their looks. When you saw them, it wasn't their looks you saw. It was their energy. And, you know, if they were radiant, that self-acceptance, that self-love, you knew it. And you also knew if they, like, were down on themselves, if they had a lower energy and didn't believe in themselves. And so it's all about what you bring to the table. And um, allowing, like, like, like Dr. Wayne Dyer said about being a spirit having a human experience, not a human having a spiritual experience. It's like the human experience is wearing these suits, right? And it's the spirit you bring that radiates out that determines that majesticness or not. And it's only in fully accepting yourself that you can have that majesticness, right? I mean, royalty, um, sometimes to a fault, um, appear to be perfect, right? They're, they can't do anything wrong. Their word is law, literally, and... Um, they're like a step up from real humans in a way. But the true majesticness is the people who are so comfortable in their own skin that it's like that, that power of, of moves is similar to the power of horse, right? It's this power that doesn't need to prove itself. That's why horses are so gentle, even though they are like, I mean, even cars are still judged on horsepower. Um, but it's a gentle power. They don't need to prove themselves. You know, like moose. Moose can bulldoze anyone or anything that gets in its way if you wanted to. 
but they don't. They're, they're gentle. They're the largest member of the deer family. So they kind of embody the entire spectrum of deerness from the smallest to them, to the biggest. And so they also bring in that sense of compassion and gentleness. Um, because they don't have to prove their worth. They don't have to, you know, go out of their way to prove that they're worthy. They just are. And part of that is that the antlers on top, which are basically a radar that funnels into the crown chakra, right? And so it's like this wide open receiving that light of spirit of the divine into you um, so that you become that pillar of light. Like, like, like the purpose of light workers, of healers, of, you know, earth angels, whatever you want, whatever label you want to put on different variations on that theme, our job is to anchor the light in this world in order to raise the frequency. Radar, wide open, always receiving that light so that you become the center of the universe. You become the center of reality because you are not just taking things as they come, you are creating, you are affecting the world around you by simply being in it. So, so, similar to what I was just saying to Amberall with otter medicine, it's like, you might stumble, you might um, you might break branches off when you're going through the woods, but none of it is a mistake. None of it, none of it is wrong. None, none of it reflects poorly on you. Um, and those things are how we learn, right? It's like the rumble strips on the edge of the, of the freeway. They have the rumble strips there to may help you realize, oh, you were veering off, you know, from center. And the whole point is to kind of jump you up so that you can um, course um, correct back onto the center of the road, right? And so when we have those times when we feel like we're not doing so well and that that's like what that's like us kind of starting to veer onto the and to the rumble strips. And a lot of us drive on the rumble strips <laughs> and forget that that's not normal, right? And then, you know, then we get this, you know, we could go either way. We can go off the rails into the ditch if we're not careful. But um, so instead of, instead of berating yourself for things that may, like, you think you should be doing, you're not doing enough of it, you're not doing it well enough, or whatever, that is not, that's the rumble strip. That is not the main course. And it's just a reminder to help you adjust back into focus to remember, okay, wait, where, where am I supposed to be going? This isn't true. I, I'm not screwing up. Everything is unfolding in perfect harmony as it always does. Everything is always working out for me. And so again, like bringing back that self-acceptance to everything is perfect. You are perfect in every way. You're perfect by just you being you. And so 
Don't hit those rumble strips and use that as an excuse to go off under the ditch. It's like that thing I talk about from down in front. <laughs> down in front. Um, Martha Beck talks about the shackles on and the shackles off feeling, right? And if you're feeling like I should be doing something else, I'm not doing this, I'm not fulfilling that, that's a shackles on. That makes you feel smaller and and worthless and victimized, right? So that is not true. If it feels like the shackles are going on, whatever that thought is, is untrue. And if it feels like the shackles are going off, like I'm perfect, this is okay. There, I can recover from this. I can redeem myself. This isn't this isn't fatal, whatever. It's like the shackles going off, feeling bigger and more powerful. Kind of, I don't know if, if anyone didn't watch last week's um, video. I did a, I did this thing. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. It's an exercise again that I learned from Martha Beck, um, where. You have to have a partner and you hold your hands apart and you try like try to push hands together or hands apart. Um, I have it, it's, it's in the video from last week and the whole point of it is to prove to you how much even physically stronger you are when you're coming from a place of love, when you're coming from a place of the heart. And if you're you know, if you're criticizing yourself and judging yourself, you're not powerful. And you're, you're stealing your own power away. And it's like, be like moose. Okay, there are no mistakes. There are no bad paths. There are no bad decisions. Wherever I am is exactly where I need to be. I'm in the perfect place at the perfect time. I'm perfect just the way I am. And any mistakes are chances to learn. Okay? So you are perfect just the way you are. I have it on good authority because Fred Meyer, Fred, Fred Meyer, Fred Rogers is one of my main spirit guides. So you are perfect. You are perfect. All right. I bet you there's still food over there, Missy. I don't think you ate it all. All right, so that is our readings for tonight. I'm gonna do one more card for the community. It's kind of like our community totem to guide us through this week. And while I'm doing that, just a couple of announcements again. Um, if you enjoy my work or you got something from tonight and would like to reciprocate, I have my PayPal and Venmo pinned to the top of the comments. And anything you wish to give me, I am more than grateful. I am so, I just, it still amazes me that people pay me to do these things. So thank you for that. Thank you for your support of my path so I can do my work so that I can support you. I think that's one of the most beautiful examples of reciprocity. What else? Wednesday nights, if you didn't weren't aware, I also do a video of the Sacred Pipe Ceremonies. It's at seven o'clock on Wednesday nights right here on my Facebook channel. Um, and if you don't know what that is, if you think about the peace pipe, like seeing everyone smoking the peace pipe and the old westerns, etc. That's the sacred pipe. And I am a pipe carrier and I do a ceremony every Wednesday to hold space for people to be able to send their prayers and intentions and connect to spirit to take a little bit of time out of a busy, busy week and connect to spirit on a deeper level. So 
That is Wednesday. Um, and um, I announced, I think it was last week I announced it. Um, my, my situation with my office is changing. I'm not going out of business. Um, I'm just, the lease is up and, and, um, the store that I work through no longer can maintain the wellness center. So, but I'm still going to be do, re, doing readings and healings. The, the, um, owner of the store is so gracious that she cleared a room, cleared some storage space to create a nice little reading room that has enough space to do healings as well. So I can still do everything I was doing in my office, just downstairs in the store at Four Sisters. Um, and I'm, I'm actually, tomorrow, today was technically my official last day there, but um, I still have some things there um, that I'll finish moving out tomorrow. But, um, it, it was kind of hard because I love that space, but at the same time, that space was a reflection of me and I'm the frog, like I was talking to Roulette about and that vibration follows me and I'm ready and excited about what's next. If I could create, manifest such a beautiful spot, um, and I've done a lot, a lot of growing and evolving and expanding since I created that space. It's like, what can I do now? What lies ahead? So, but I'm going to still try to maintain my same office hours, Wednesday through Friday, 11 to 6, and second and fourth Saturdays from 11 to 6. So there might be some variation in there, but... Um, you can always, you can always email me or text me or press it, per, blah, 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 private message me and ask about availability or find out because I'm also flexible at other times as well. So, um, yeah. And so if you need to find out when and where I am, the best place to go is to my website, perchingwolfstudios.net. And you can set up a session with me right from there. You can read more, find out more about me and find out the different shamanic services I offer, readings and healings and teachings. Oh my. So um, still in business, still moving forward. And I want to thank everyone for the support that I've been given. I, I posted on Instagram and then on the Facebook about the whole process of leaving my office and everyone has been so kind and and optimistic and and um, I just can't tell you how much your belief in me really touches me so thank you for that it takes a village to raise a shaman so all right one more card let's get this card taken care of and when we're done here, I am going to share this video to my Facebook page. I'm also going to upload it to my Perching Wolf Studios YouTube channel. So check out my, my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. And if you would be so kind as to like some of my videos, that helps the algorithm, makes it easier for others to find me. Um, and there's, oh, there's like five years at least worth of these videos, ceremony videos, songs and stories and different things. So, and thank you for your patronage. And this last card. All right. The card for a community is the boar, wild boar. Be fearless and be bold and be crazy. That's the way of a boar. And because of that, 
nobody messes with boar. Boar is probably the fiercest animal on the face of the planet. And in fact, because of that, like around the globe in different indigenous communities, it's killing a wild boar that is the, the rite of passage to adulthood because you're not guaranteed to survive. And so we as a community are leveling up. We're all going through our own rite of passages. But like I said earlier, this wouldn't, the, nothing is gonna happen that is beyond you. And it's like step into Boar's energy. It's, it's, it's like that, that thing with karate where you learn karate. Once you learn karate, you usually don't need to use it because it shifts your energy. Then you, you walk and act in ways that um, people don't see you as prey people don't pick on you and just that that assuredness that you can take care of yourself defend yourself means that you usually don't have to a tiger will see a boar coming down the path and the tiger will turn tail and run the other way because no one wants to mess with them because they are so fierce and unpredictable um so be, be fierce, be unpredictable and celebrate that uniqueness and know that you are protected and safe. Um, and that when the fears, when issues come up, all you need to do is face them. If they're coming up, you can face them. You might be quaking in your boots, but if you, you can face something, you can overcome it. And it's like you just keep walking and those fears dissipate like the illusion that they are. And rather than having to face bore, you actually step into boreness and you become bore where you are so confident and sure of yourself, you know who you are, so you don't have to actually defend yourself because, because law of attraction, you, you, you know, energy attracts like energy. And if you're in your center, most of the time, you're not gonna have to have to defend yourself. And I'm not going to go in, I could go on tangents about the different nuances of that, but I'm not going to. So thank you. We, I've, I've held you here for long enough. Thank you to everyone who stayed through this whole thing. Um, I hope you will join me next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And until I see you again, know that I love you, that I see you, and that I honor you. Have a wonderful week, everyone, and go shining. All right.